these are the Marina Towers, located on the edge of the Chicago River. There's a marina down below. But what we're really concentrating on is the traffic cones up on the top of the parking structure. There it is. That is where the car will be launched into the river. Right in there. Probably right about there. <coughs> Let's take a look at the vertical motion of the car coming off of the tower into the Chicago River and see if we can't understand a little bit more about its motion. Looking just in the vertical direction, taking a look at what we do and don't know, we have initial velocity, final velocity, displacement, acceleration, and time. Of those, what information are we given? Well, initial velocity in the vertical direction has to be zero meters per second. Final velocity we don't know yet. We could go measure the vertical displacement, but let's see if we can't calculate it. As we already know the acceleration, if I choose down to be the positive direction, our acceleration will be 10 meters per second squared, the acceleration due to gravity, always toward the center of the Earth when you're on the surface of the Earth. And finally, the time. And I can get the time from the video clip by using a stopwatch or frame by frame. I went and analyzed the, uh, the time for the cars to drop from the tower to the river as 3.05 seconds. We have three givens, which means we should be able to use our kinematic equations to find our two unknowns. Why don't we start by finding our final velocity? To do that, we could use our equation VF equals VI plus AT. Right away we've already solved for VF, so we just plug in our variables equals 0 plus 10 meters per second squared times 3.05 seconds. 10 times 3.05 implies that final velocity is equal to 30.5 meters per second. That's moving pretty fast. Now, let's take a look and let's also see if we can't figure out the displacement. We know it started from roughly 18 stories. So I'm thinking that should be somewhere on the order of 50 meters. Let's see how accurate we are. We now know VF as 30.5 meters per second. So we could use any of our kinematic equations that have delta x in them. I am going to choose VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta X. And solving for delta X, delta X will then equal VF squared minus VI squared all over 2A. All I have to do now is plug in my variables. Delta X equals 30.5 meters per second squared minus 0 squared all over 2 times 10 meters per second squared. And if I do that, I come out with the value around 46.5 meters. Well, the next thing I ask is, does that make sense? 46.5 meters. Um, given that a meter is a little bit more than 3 feet, you're talking on the order of roughly 150 feet probably makes sense. We had previously guessed it was going to be about 50 meters. 
there you go. Notice as we solved these vertical kinematics problems, at no point did we ever need to refer to the horizontal velocity of the car. Doesn't matter. We can treat the vertical and horizontal motion of a projectile completely independently.